Hello and welcome to Core Finance in association with the Next Exchange. I'm joined today by Denise Cockrum, Chief Financial Officer of Good Energy PLC. Thank you very much for coming onto the show, Denise. Um, we're going to start off with what is Good Energy, where do you operate, and uh, how do you make your revenue? Thank you, Matt. So Good Energy was founded in 1999. We are a purpose-led organisation and the purpose of our business is to power the choice of a cleaner, greener future together. What that effectively means is that we supply 100% renewable energy to our customers. Those customers are both domestic customers and business customers. We also provide feed-in tariff administration. Now in terms, if you've got solar panels on your roof, we actually provide the administration so that you can get your payment from the government, your subsidy payment. So we, we administer that. And we've got one of the about second or third largest businesses that, that do that. Um, we also generate some of our own energy. So we have two wind sites and we have eight solar sites. And that energy that's generated provides the supply for around 20% of our customers. The rest of the energy we buy from a retail network of around 1,400 small distributors. So that might be your local farmer down the road who's, who's uh, generating with solar panels, might be anaerobic digestion, might be some small hydro. Um, so that, that's really how we help them to access and sell their energy into, into the grid. So quite an inclusive, so hence the word together in our purpose is, is really, really important. Um, in terms of how we make money, we basically, it's by retailing uh, the uh, energy supply. So we're an energy supply business, mm -hmm. uh, but we're also an energy generation business. Historically, we have developed some assets as well, and we have either held those as part of our portfolio to generate energy for our customers, or we have sold some of them, and we've used that funding then to build out new assets. So it's a, it's a positive story. It's a story I like personally. Can the UK ever become 100% reliant on mm -hmm. renewable energy? Mm -hmm. We're moving towards it, but mm -hmm. are we moving quick enough? <laughs> and more importantly, what can good energy do to mm -hmm. achieve that? Absolutely. So I think you're right, we are moving really, really quickly. So um, we, we're now generating around 25% of all of the energy from renewable energy, and that's a massive change from, mm -hmm. from where we were even sort of 10 years ago. So the industry is changing very quickly. Uh, I think in terms of the, the feasibility of 100% renewable, I think the, if you couple some of the developments in technology, uh, actually that's starting to make things possible. So we look at the technologies at the moment, so mainly we're talking about solar, we're talking about um, onshore wind, mm -hmm. offshore wind. If you start to then bring in things like tidal, um, you start to bring in the possibilities around battery storage, that actually gives you far more flexibility. So some of the technologies, they don't turn up at necessarily the time that your customers are, are <laughs> using energy. So it's about being able to balance those. Uh, so I think actually if you, if you start to, if you get a, a broad range of different technologies, you put in the concept of battery storage, then actually that, that potential is, is closer than perhaps we realise. So certainly in terms of our role in it, uh, we obviously, uh, we've got quite a diversified uh, portfolio with different technologies in, and we've also made an investment in Tidal Lagoon, because mm -hmm. we think that that's one of the, the, the real interesting technologies of the future. So uh, we're very keen and hope that government will actually uh, approve that scheme. Uh, there's been some very positive reviews on the scheme, and we're really looking forward to that being launched, because that will be a significant addition to the uh, portfolio for us. And, and what is your criteria for looking at these additions to the portfolio? Mm -hmm. is, is it something that you, you see, you've got to see value in? You've got to see value not only for the company, yeah. but obviously for mm -hmm. shareholders as well. And, and how stringent are you on, yeah. on picking these projects? Absolutely. So, so in terms of projects, yes, absolutely. We have investment thresholds. So mm -hmm. it's really making sure that the technology is, is proven. And it's also making sure that that technology will deliver a significant uh, return to, to shareholders. Mm -hmm. um, the, as, a, as a business, we, we clearly have a, a purpose. To enable us to fulfill that purpose, it's important that we actually continue to be sustainably profitable and deliver good returns for our shareholders. So we, we do apply the normal investment criteria um, as if we were a brown energy company to, uh, mm -hmm. to our, 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 our products. Uh, I guess the difference that we have is from an ownership structure, we have a lot of customers who are also um, shareholders in the business, so more than 50%, and that is a real differentiator. Mm -hmm. And for example, in 2016, we raised around £3 million, 
and the vast majority of that came from our customers. That's great because it shows that they buy mm -hmm. into what we do, they tend to stay with us for longer as well, and they really support our purpose and actually making a difference. That, that's great to hear that the actual kind of customers mm -hmm. have uh, ownership of, of the company uh, to some extent, and obviously, obviously want the mm -hmm. company to grow as you do. With regards to the UK regulatory environment, mm -hmm. how do you think that will change in, mm -hmm. in the next 10 years? And um, certainly regarding energy consumption and, and how mm -hmm. we're going to consume energy yes. and hopefully renewable energy um, over the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. It's a really interesting question, and there's been there's been a lot of changes. I think mm -hmm. the, the the environment, the the energy industry is is changing incredibly quickly. I think what you're starting to see is a move to more um, distributed uh, distribution of, mm -hmm. of energy and, and and supply, and actually consumers are wanting to be involved in some of that generation as well. So actually have a bit more of a choice. Um, so I would like to see regulation changing to actually help that and enable that probably more than it does at the moment. I think in terms of uh, sort of climate change, impact of climate change and sort of clean energy regulations. So clearly we've signed up as a, as a country um, to various um, EU regulations. I would like to see that uh, staying so yes. that we commit to those targets. I think what's really interesting actually is in the usage of, of energy because we're definitely seeing people's consumption, energy consumption is actually coming down. You're getting far more uh, new homes built with energy efficiency in, which again is, is great. Uh, but you're also starting to see an increase in electric vehicles and therefore the way in which people use energy is, is changing. I think for me one of the most worrying stats is that we actually import more than 60% of our energy into the UK. That's the thing that probably frightens me most mm -hmm. and actually our ability to generate our own clean energy within the UK and actually become more self-sufficient around that, uh, that for me uh, if we could get regulation that actually supported that, that would be a, a good step forward for us. And, and would it be fair to say that you, you're in a prime position that if regulation and consumer mm -hmm. approach to, to energy mm -hmm. and renewable energy, certainly, mm -hmm. you're in a, a prime position to, to benefit from this? Absolutely. I, mean, I think in, in terms of the, I guess, public perception, more than 80% of people support renewable energy. Um, so there's a really high interest in renewable energy and, and people wanting to drive that forward. I think from our perspective, we're a very customer-focused organisation. Therefore, putting the customer at the heart of what we do, understanding what's important to them, what they need, and actually making it easy for them to make the right choices. That's very much the ethos of the, uh, of the business. So yes, absolutely. I think, uh, I think we are very well placed. I think there's some really exciting opportunities around um, storage products, mm -hmm. uh, projects, um, around um, electric vehicles and actually how we help consumers. Uh, once you buy an electric vehicle, there's a whole host of questions that, that you maybe have a whole host of different needs and actually being able to support those is really important. And actually then helping uh, companies to become green. We understand the green environment very well and actually enabling them to change their consumption habits and the way in which they organise things uh, to, to actually improve their carbon footprint is something, again, that, uh, that we can do. And um, becoming a shareholder in, in, in good, good mm. energy, there's... Obviously, the environmental uh, side of, of the company, and, and mm -hmm. that, that's very important now with conscientious mm -hmm. investors. Yes. And, and does that help now being a listed company that mm -hmm. these types of investors can, can buy your shares and, and have a share in, in a company such as yours? Yeah, it does. I mean, I think, I think there's still, so uh, investors will still, and quite rightly, um, look through an investment lens to make mm -hmm. sure that actually the, the investment makes sense. Uh, what I do think we're seeing, though, is, is far more investors who actually look at the purpose of the business and look at the social impact that, mm -hmm. that it makes. So we're members of the Social Stock Exchange. And for, for us, actually going through that accreditation process each year producing an impact report, we think that's really helpful because where investors are actually seeking specific um, investments that have a social impact, it's a very easy mm -hmm. way for them to identify. And certainly the appetite is there. If you look, the, I think there was a survey done recently uh, with some uh, sort of young people, young, young graduates talking about pensions and where they wanted to invest they are far more conscious in terms of where they actually want to put their money. And so for me, I think there is a growing appetite to, mm -hmm. to invest, uh, notwithstanding the fact that businesses need to continue to make a sustainable return so that they continue to, uh, to deliver on their purposes. And finally, 
over the next 12 months, or, or uh, let's push it out, the next five <laughs> years, um, I won't hold you to it, but mm -hmm. where do you see good energy mm -hmm. going? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So in terms of, of next 12 months, so next 12 months I can see um, us continuing to grow our business customers quite significantly. Mm -hmm. Slower growth on domestic. So uh, in 2017, we put in a new billing system and we've been taking the time just to get that billing system right to make sure that we're providing the high quality customer service that we should do to our customers. So we'll see that still uh, still a little bit held back in the early part of, uh, of 2018. Um, in terms of our strategic initiatives, we're focusing very much on storage and uh, I, would, I would definitely uh, expect to see some pilot projects of that uh, launched in 2018. Um, electric vehicles, again, I think we're starting to make some good progress uh, towards um, working in partnership with, with other people to actually support customers around electric vehicles. And then if we roll forward five years, so in terms of the ambition we set for our shareholders, it was to at least double the EBITDA for the mm -hmm. supply business. If I look back at my um, annual growth rates, compound annual growth rates over the last five years, my revenue's grown by more than 40%, my EBITDA's grown by more than 30%. So if I could look back on the next five years <laughs> with those kind of metrics or more, I would be pretty happy. Fantastic, and I'm sure the shareholders would be very happy with those mm -hmm. metrics too. In the meantime, Denise, Thank you very much for joining us here today. Thank you, Matt.